Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This week I've got a pretty cool and pretty important project for you. It's a first aid cabinet for the workshop. Now a viewer had watched one of my videos and left me a comment said, Hey Laney, can you make a first aid cabinet for the workshop? Well I am setting up this new workshop and it's the one thing that's not in here so I thought to myself, yeah, that would be the perfect project to do. This first aid cabinet is made almost entirely of pallet wood except for the knob and the back handle. Now I'll admit, this is my first time working with pallet wood. As a matter of fact, this is my first pallet project. Now I know pallet projects are all the craze nowadays. I've seen a lot of things out there being made with pallets. And it wasn't until recently when Steve Ramsey put out his pallet projects that it really opened my eyes and inspired me to give it a shot. And I thought to myself, well I better jump on board before I miss the boat. Now with that being said, the first thing I learned right out of the gate Tearing those pallets apart is a lot of work. More work than I'm used to at the beginning of any project. So with that being said, let's get started. Now, I tried, and I really did try, to embrace the rustic nature of the pallet wood, but I ended up planing it down. And um, it's pretty. Now, believe it or not, some of this pine actually spalted, and I would never have noticed it if I didn't plane it down. So there's all kinds of blues and colors and yellows and stuff in some of these boards, which I'm real happy about. So now what I got to do is go ahead and straight edge these uh, to get rid of some of the rough edge because I want to joint some of these boards together to make the sides and everything. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Alright guys, to joint these boards, basically what I have is a piece of MDF uh, that is uh, parallel and, and pretty squared up. I, at the end of the MDF here, I just put a little stop block, I screwed a stop block in there to have so the top board can rest against it. And then I have two smaller little hold down blocks that I just screw in. Uh, instead of putting clamps or something, these boards, these pallet boards vary in length and everything. So I just have these screwed into where it holds everything down nice and tight. Now that gives me a straight edge to run against my fence to where I can cut off and create a straight edge on the pallet board. And then from there I can turn the pallet board around adjust my fence and rip the other side and uh, square everything up. So let's go ahead and do that. And just a nice thin strip off the edge to give myself a nice straight edge that I can run against the fence. I can turn this board over now and go ahead and rip the other side. I'm going to do all of one side using this jig uh, for all the pallet boards and get everything nice and pressure fit in there. It's mostly just a pressure fit holding everything down but it's a nice secure fit. If anything were to loosen up all I have to do is tighten these two screws here. But everything looks good, ready to go. Alright, well that's a handy little jig for something quick and simple. Um, now that I have a nice clean straight edge to reference off of on each one of my pallet boards, all I have to do is adjust the fence over to where I am 
taking just a little bit off of the other edge, this other rough edge, and I can take my clean edge up against the fence, run this board through, square up everything, and clean up this other edge, and we're good to go. Go ahead and get some panels glued up for the sides of this first aid box. All right, let's do that. Okay, so now that I've ran through and straight edged both sides of each of the pallet boards, I can go ahead and glue up my panels for the side. I'm going to take a look at each board and I'm going to see if there's any kind of uh, grain, consistent grain pattern or anything. Uh, so when I match up the panels, maybe I can get some kind of flow in the pattern. I'll do that as I'm gluing them up. I want to show you guys something real quick. Uh, it's pretty cool. When I planed these boards down, uh, I thought, oh, I'm going to get some flat for that because I'm trying to upcycle pallets. And I didn't embrace the rusticness of the pallet. Uh, but I, I planed them down. But check this out, and I'm going to see if I can get closer. You see that detail right there? That's all knots. That's little bitty knots. It's pretty cool, right? Well, let's see if you can see this. Do you see that coloration? in there and maybe you'll be able to see it in this one better there's some blues and yellows some really cool spalting going on in this pine and I'm really really liking that so hidden treasure all right I'm gonna get these panels glued up and then we're gonna get serious about getting this thing done do box joints on this particular box. I haven't done box joints in a while. I think the last box joint uh, box or project I did was the uh, router bit cabinet with the secret compartment. So we're going to go ahead and make this first aid kit uh, using box joints. Now I'm making my box 10 by 16. That's how that's the size I want. 10 by 16. A nice little golden ratio number. I've got some cutoffs uh, from the side pieces that I'm going to use to run some test cuts. It's always good to have cutoffs from the project material you're working with. It's already milled to the same thickness and same uh, cut to the same width and everything as your, your project parts. That way you can get an accurate setup when you're setting up your tools and stuff. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to run through a setup real quick. Uh, and then we're going to get busy getting some box joints cut, finger joints. Whatever. Okay, when it comes to setting up the box joints, uh, first thing I've got my blade height set to where it's just a little bit deeper than the, high, the, the thickness of my material because I want my fingers to be a little long so that way when I put these joints together there's a little bit of overhang that I can sand nice and flush and everything. On setting up our box joint jig we're going to take our back piece and we're going to set it right up against the side of this key and then we're going to take, I've got a little square here set to 3 eighths of an inch, the thickness of our cut and our keys, uh, our, our fingers and I'm going to place that up against the edge then I'm going to take my front piece and offset it by that 3 eighths of an inch. So I have it offset here by our 3 eighths of an inch. And now with everything together, and my offset being right on target, bam, I can go ahead and uh, get a clamp on there, make my cut, and then I can start working my fingers and everything. Uh, from this point, I'm going to hold the, have the clamp on for the first cut. And then after that, I won't need the clamp because both of my hands, I'll be able to work the board all the way around. So let's go ahead and get that done.
Okay, by increasing our depth of cut just that little bit, we've got a nice looking box joint here. Uh, the fingers are protruding just a little bit, a fingernail grab, which will sand up nice and smooth. Uh, the joint, the fingers, I mean, the spacing, everything is perfect. All we have to do now is get our side pieces set up and make our cuts for our side pieces and get this box together. But that is a nice looking set of fingers right there. I'm happy with it. Let's go. All right, guys, all of the box joints are done. I've just got a dry fit here. I don't have anything together. I just wanted to say that this side over here, with all these little knots and everything, what a cool feature that is. Uh, I really like that. And I don't, I've never really seen that before. Um, you know, other than like, you know, say bird's eye maple, you know, the little eyes and everything. Uh, it's almost like what it is, just a little bit bigger. But yeah, it's really nice. And then on this side over here, I've got a nice cool dark streak running up here. Uh, I don't know if that's heartwood or just you know a part of the pine or something, but it's really, really cool. And um, of course, like I said, nothing's glued together. But uh, over on this side, I've got some knots going on. So this pilot wood, pallet wood project is gonna be really cool. And um, I'm ready to glue this up and uh, we'll start working on the rest of the parts of it. Okay, with the box and its clamps, the band clamps are a great alternative to bar clamps and everything. Uh, these little wooden calls here help keep the band clamp off the finger joints and everything. So that way you get a nice tight joint, good fit, keeps everything nice and square. Uh, all you have to do is just kind of, if, if it's out of square, just shift the box one way or another to make sure all four sides are square. And in a few minutes, the school will set up a little bit. We'll peel off the blue tape on the inside to uh, clean up that glue squeeze out. And when it's completely cured, we'll go ahead and clean up the outside, start working on the front, the back, and on the inside. Okay guys, I've got the uh, box glued together. Everything is good. i got it sanded up and cleaned up and all. Finger joints look good. Listen, i got the back here now, and uh, I'm using a piece of birch plywood, quarter inch birch plywood. Now, if I simply cut this plywood down to size so it fit around the back of the box and, you know, glued it, pin nailed it or whatever, it absolutely would not take from the box at all. I mean, it's, very, it's, a, it's a very small quarter of an inch. It doesn't look bad at all if I did that. Uh, very quick and simple to put it back on that way if you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I'm going I'm to go ahead and cut this down to the inside dimensions of here and I'm going to put it on the inside and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. Uh, and I just want to try something for the back because I didn't cut any little rabbits or anything back here uh, in the back to put the back on and stuff because I want to try something a little bit different uh, and I'll show you how it is but if you wanted something quick and simple and you wanted to throw a back on here it absolutely would not take away from it whatsoever I mean this is going to be a first aid kit it still looks good uh, that, that little bit isn't going to make a difference now that we have that clear let me show you what I'm going to do and uh, we'll see if it works. Okay guys, I've got uh, my box here, I've got my back cut, my back is going to go on the inside, on the inside, but first I went ahead and ripped down some little quarter inch by half inch strips, 
and I'm going to take them strips and I'm going to glue them on the inside of that frame all the way around. Sometimes you got to have a little fun with your woodworking. Oh yeah, colorful clamps. Check it out, these clamps match my shirt. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now that the fun's over and I got this little lip in here, I can go ahead and put my back panel in. I'm going to just lay it down, add a little glue on that little lip that I just glued in, set the back panel in. Nice pressure fit all the way down, don't really need any clamping, the glue will catch. Just make sure you're nice and pressed down. Voila! Alright, so now let's work on the inside and the door. All right, so now I have my shelf in here. Now, of course, my shelf is removable. What you saw me do is I just put a couple of little shelf brackets in here, and I squared up the first one, glued and pin nailed it into place, put the shelf in there so I could square up the second one and make sure that my shelf was nice and square with the box and everything. Alright guys, it's storming outside so I do apologize about the audio. Just wanted to let you know, what I just did was put the hinges on to the door panel that I just cut. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on the door lever mechanism, as well as the stuff on the inside. Alright, I'm working on the mechanism for the door handle, or the door knob and the latch and all. I've got a small little scrap piece here that uh, this piece will roll into and this is on a spring, this wooden knob and a quarter inch dowel here with a small little uh, spring that uh, you can push it in and turn and it will keep the door closed and then unlock and everything. So once I get that figured out we'll get it in the cabinet and see how well it does. Now I want this hole a little bit bigger than the dowel so the dowel can slide in and out real nicely because I want that spring to go to tension. So I'm just going to waller it out just a little bit uh, to kind of increase the diameter of it. That's perfect. Alright, now I'm going to step it up and drill a little bit bigger hole but just real shallow, just enough for the end of that spring to kind of lock into. Okay, by drilling that little step up hole, my spring can lock into that hole and it'll lock into the end of the dowel and just kind of, it'll keep everything nice and firm in there. Uh, now, what I want to go ahead and do is, I made this little half moon here. Uh, basically, I took a hole saw, uh, what was it, I think about an inch and a half hole saw and uh, cut it out because the, the center drill bit for the hole saw is a quarter inch which is a perfect fit for my little latch here and then I went ahead and cut half the circle off left a little bit of room in there so I could uh, have something 
on this side of the dowel. If you can see that. All right, so now basically what's going to happen is, is this going to be able to lock in, and then as you turn it, it'll unlock it. That's the whole goal. Let's see how well it goes together. All right, well, here's the concept. Uh, I've got the knob and everything on along with the spring and stuff. And basically, when this is turned, the spring pops out with the hand on the dowel to open everything up. So now all I need to do is go ahead and trim my dowel up, get this piece glued on, this little latch here glued on so it doesn't spin or anything. I need to sand it up, kind of get make things tight and right and all so it works well. And that's going to be my mechanism. Okay guys, well I thought I wasn't going to make it through this video because of the weather, but luckily it slowed down and I was able to finish. Now as you saw just a minute ago, I went ahead and sprayed the clear coat on here and I just used a spray can lacquer, put about four coats on and that'll be fine. I also added a little red cross here on the front, which is the international sign for first aid and emergency, just to indicate that this is a first aid cabinet. The knob worked out perfectly, the latch and everything unlocks and the door opens great uh, so I'm real happy about that and it's a quick release so I can get in this cabinet if I ever need to and let's hope I don't uh, as far as the inside throughout the video I had talked about uh, adding some internal trays and everything well, once I realized what I wanted to put in here uh, the trays would have just taken up room and it was absolutely not necessary so I didn't go with that the one shelf in here was perfect uh, what I ended up doing is stocking my first aid kit with some things that uh, I thought that I would need in the shop in case of an emergency. Now, uh, but I can recommend that uh, when you guys, if you guys get a chance or if you haven't seen, Mark Spagnolo put out a great little video for Safety Day, which was May 1st, uh, talking about a first aid kit in the wood shop. And uh, he goes through and shows you some of the things that uh, might be handy to have in your first aid cabinet so you can check out that video I'll put a link to that video uh, down in the description so uh, be sure to check that out and it give you some good ideas about to put in here but this is what I've got in mind and uh, everything fits nice and neat and as I said if I would have done any internal trays and stuff it would have just taken up room and it was absolutely not necessary so this is all done and ready to uh, hang up on the wall all right, well that closes the door on this project. I wanna thank you for sticking around with me and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next week, guys, I'll see you soon.